people, 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 uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, you already know who it is, it's the man, the main man, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok, guys, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful this morning, just because, well, guess what, Mondays are beautiful, okay, and I know I'm supposed to have Gary Vee, but I got backlogged a little bit in terms of my Tony Robbins and this and that, so you guys are going to get Gary Vee tomorrow, and with that being said, guys, I want to get into this, now, NPA, the Napoleon Hill, the NMA, the PMA, I'm just going to go over the last steps of, of course, Chapter 3. All right, so that's, of course, clearing the cobwebs. So I want to go over some of these rules, okay? Now, of course, rule number one, you are what you think. Your thoughts are evaluated by whether your attitude is positive or negative. Take a look at yourself. Are you a good person? Are you, are you evil? Are you healthy? Are you psychosomatically ill like a lot of people I know? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, example. Are you wealthy? Are you poor? If you are, then, whatever it is, hey, you know what? If you're good, that means you have good thoughts. If you are wealthy, that means you have good thoughts. But guess what? If you are poor, or if you are evil, or if you are this or that, it's because you have negative thoughts. Okay? Your thinking makes you this way. Your thoughts are are of riches, okay, and you know what, your thoughts could be of poverty too, that's how this works, that's the bare minimum of that, number two, negative, okay, feelings, emotions, passions, prejudices, beliefs, habits, you need to clear these mental, you know, these mental cobwebs by turning your talisman from NMA, flipping that coin, to the PMA, Number three, you can clear the mental cobwebs of negative passions and emotions and feelings and tendencies and all of those just by your habits. And remember, I've told you guys about, you know, forming good habits so many different times on so many different occasions. Number four, when you are faced with a problem that involves a misunderstanding with other people, you must first start with yourself, not them. Number five, one word can cause an argument, develop misunderstanding, generate unhappiness, and end in misery. (laughs) One word with BMA, when compared to the the other word, MMA, brings opposite effects. One word can bring peace or war, yes or no, love or hate, integrity or dishonesty. All right, so again, um... I've talked about, you know, necessity being the word, of course, to motivate you to high achievement, okay? There's a lot of different words out there, like, you know, determination and, you know, passion and this and having compassion, having empathy, all of these things. What you need to ultimately do, you need to direct your thoughts, control your emotions, and ordain your destiny. Memorize that. I'll say it again. I'll repeat it again. Direct your thoughts. Control your emotions and ordain your destiny. Period. Hey, if you memorize that, repeat that out loud, of course, on a daily basis, you should basically embed it into your subconscious mind. So that is chapter number three. Okay, so chapter number four, I really want to get into this, of course, with a quote. And the quote is, you are a mind with a body. Now, let me get the, let me basically put this into Napoleon Hill's words. He said, because you are a mind, you possess mystical powers, powers known and unknown. Dare to explore the powers, as this chapter is called, of your mind, and will you explore them? See, when you start and begin to make the discoveries that are awaiting you, then you could bring into the, you know, bring the physical, the mental and moral health, happiness and wealth. Success in your chosen field of endeavor. And you know what? Even a means to affect, use, control, and harmonize with powers known and unknown. See, dare to investigate all non-physical forces lying outside the realm of known physical processes. Forces, basically, which you can, you know, which you can possess and learn and how to apply them. And this will not be so difficult to you. No more difficult than turning a television set for the time. Guys. This is what he wrote. And basically what I got from this was, well, think about everyone who is out there who has created everything for us. From the Wright Brothers, or, you know, Thomas Edison, Wright Brothers, Harvey Firestone, Henry Ford, all of these people. I'm talking, okay, up to present day. You got the Steve Jobs. 
uh, Apple, although he got fired, but you think about the Bill Gates who actually started with, um, what is that, Microsoft? or I, One of those things, yeah. And if you think about everyone else who's operating at such a high frequency that has so much money, I'm talking about the Cristiano Ronaldo's, the Lionel Messi's, the Michael Jordan, the this, the that. What do they have that you don't have? Nothing. They have the same brain capacity and they still have the same trillions of amounts of cells such as what you have within your mind, within your brain, whatever you want to call it. See, it's time to turn the right knob and push the right button so you can power the most amazing electrical machine ever, which is called the mind. 80 trillion cells is what they say, of course, how much the mind has. Each part within the cell has its own electrical mechanism. And what makes it even more unbelievably amazing is that Napoleon Hill broke this broke this down into basically a simple paragraph. He said, one part is the electrical is an electrical marvel, yet it weighs only 50 ounces. Its mechanism consists over 10 billion cells which generate, receive, record, and transmit energy. It's our body. You are and will be the same you even though even though you lose an arm, an eye, and other parts of your body. You will still be the same. And the electrical marvel, of course, it could be, hey, you know what? Your brain, your nervous system, all of this compiled together is bas- it basically makes that. And you know what? Your mind has both the conscious and the subconscious. They synchronize. They work together. You know what? Scientists have even learned a great deal about the conscious mind. Yet, it has been less than 100 years since we began to explore the vast unknown territory of the subconscious mind. Even though primitive man has deliberately used the mystical powers of the subconscious from the beginning of man's history. And even today, of course, if you look at the Aborigines of Australia and the Native Americans and the people who are still living out there on remote islands somewhere in the Dead Sea. Yes, the primitive people. And so if you really think about that, I love that sentence. I'm going to read that one more time. Scientists have learned a great deal about the conscious mind, yet over 100 years, they still don't they still haven't been able to explore the vast unknown territory of the un or the subconscious mind. How remarkable is that? See, we still don't know how we have dreams. We don't. There isn't a legitimate, you know, scientist, a legitimate case study, nothing like give me the reason what's up. What is the subconscious mind? What is it? All our behaviors, all our thing, everything is hiding deep within the subconscious mind. It's like depression. Depression goes, I feel that sadness is in the conscious, depression's in the subconscious. It's a dungeon in there. And it could be a dungeon of information. It could be a dungeon of just lunacy. It could be a dungeon of hell. Who knows what it could be? That's what's so fascinating about the human mind. But at that same moment, the mind has put aircraft into the sky. Not only the sky, but the the mind has put aircraft onto another planet. Well, yeah, they would call the moon a planet, whatever it is. Um, But how remarkable is that? That's how strong our mind is. Seriously, I really want you to just look around you and look at the marvels. I'm looking at two sky trains going in opposite directions, cars. I see built up masterpieces. I see another massive sky train system, probably about, let's say... Probably about, let's say, uh, what is it, like three quarters of a mile just right down the road that they just built. I see all these gorgeous condominiums around me. I see all these houses. Mind has created that. Pretty amazing, huh? There was a guy by the name of Bill McCall. And you know what? This guy, of course, like a lot of us, he wanted to become rich. And he thought he could find the rules for acquiring wealth in, you know, inspirational books and whatnot. But So therefore, while checking the inspirational book section of the library... Boom! Bill became intrigued by the title Think and Grow Rich. Of course, by that great man. By the name of who? Ah, Napoleon Hill. Uh, Is it Dale Carnegie? No, Napoleon Hill. Yes, Napoleon Hill's... Wait, Napoleon Hill? Yeah, I think... Yeah, okay, I'm tripping right now. But anyways, okay. Think and Grow Rich. Just as I came across Law of Success. I didn't even come across Think and Grow Rich when I went to the bookstore. That fateful... And I mean faithful, I guess, what was it? I don't know if it was the evening, it was the afternoon. I don't know if it was at the end, 
of December, or was it at the beginning of January? But it happened right before. Yep, it was at the the end of December because I still remember because I canceled my trip to Singapore. But anywho, it was remarkable because just like, of course, what Bill McCall did, I did the same thing. I began to read it. And you know what? He read it once. I read it once. He read it again. I read it again. And even though he read it a third time, Bill McCall was still unable to understand exactly how he could apply those principles to his life. So there was one day he said he was talking to, of course, Napoleon Hill. And he's like, you know what? I was reading Think and Grow Rich for the fourth time while walking leisurely along a business street in Sydney. And then it happened just like that. It happened suddenly. He said he stopped in front of a meat market window and glanced up, and in that very fraction of a second, he had a flash of inspiration. He smiled as he continued, and he said he exclaimed aloud. He said, that's it. I've got it. And you know what? A lady was actually just, you know, she was freaking out just right next to him. She was like, what the hell is going on over here? She stopped to look at him in amazement, and she hurried, and you know what? He hurried home with this new discovery. And you know what? He ended up reading that specific chapter by the name of Auto Suggestion. The subheading was The Medium for Influencing the Subconscious Mind. And remember what I talked to you guys about auto suggestion before? You know, so basically, conscious auto suggestion is the agency of control through which an individual may voluntarily feed his subconscious mind on thoughts of creative nature. Or by neglect, permit thoughts of a destructive nature to find their way into the rich garden of his mind. When you read aloud twice daily the written statement of your desire for money with emotion or whatever it is, concentrate it with attention. And you will see and feel yourself already in the possession of that money or whatever it is you want. You communicate the object of your desire directly to your subconscious mind. Through repetition of this procedure... You voluntarily create thought habits which are favorable to your efforts to transmute desire into its monetary equivalency. Oh, that was a beautiful thing. You see what I mean? Guys, now you know the ultimate ultimate key for success. None of you guys have ever heard of auto-suggestion before in your, in your life before today. I got a lot of different people who are tuning in. From around the world, probably for the first time, they're not going to go back two years to check out my podcast. So, auto-suggestion is exactly what I just said it was. Now, what are you going to do? Like, seriously, what are you going to do in order to change whatever it is in that dungeon of your mind? Because you have the ability to do so right now. Everything can be undone in a change in your awareness. And with that being said, guys, stay tuned for the next podcast. Of course, oh, that's going to be on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, because I got backlog. So I'm sorry. I got you guys left intrigued. And you guys are like, oh, my God, this is so good. But wait, what? I have to wait a few more days? Don't worry. I'm going to take care of you with Gary V tomorrow morning so we can get your social media skills up. So stay tuned for that podcast. And as always, guys, I love you all. And a big shout out to everyone listening to me. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.